very warm welcome to So This Is Thailand. I'm Valerie McKenzie, Sawadika. I'm Johan Wimon Chalau, Sawadika. And I'm Tapani Manawe, Sawadika. So, there's many things happening. The Paralympics are on, and we're going to talk about that later. The Thais are doing extremely well. But also doing extremely well is Thailand. We've got talent. Some mm. great results. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, you know, in case you didn't miss it on TV, there are a lot of excellent performers out there, not just doing music, others doing performances, acrobatics. In fact, acrobatics is the one that won the entire show. Yeah, it's very good to see that some something that's not singing won because we have so many of those singing competitions and I feel they're very well represented. So it's great to see the acrobatics, some, some of Thailand's other talents. It's good, actually. We also saw the uh, classical pianist, which uh, I know that our host from our previous life, uh, Kipson Beck, is uh, very, very wrapped in uh, one of the classical pieces that was played. So there's certainly a lot of talent here, and I think that uh, we're going to see a lot more coming into the future. But uh, for those of you who haven't yet gone to uh, Thailand, we've got talent. Please do so. It's on every year, and there's an opportunity for you to just go out there and perform, be yourself, and... Uh, perhaps take home the goodies. I guess this young guy that won didn't think he was going to win. He thought he was good, but he thought a singer would win. And there's mm. actually a whole range of ages as well. I mean, there were some kids in there, mm. you know, dancing and singing, all the way up to, you know, much, much older and experienced people. Yeah. 30 plus. 30 plus. 30 plus, <laughs> exactly. But we didn't have the bare-breasted lady, so that was good. <laughs> so what is the news uh, at the top of the town? All right, we'll start off uh, looking at Thailand's film industry uh, and often Thailand has been accused of overusing the word hub to describe ourselves but uh, right now thanks to the proactive marketing from the Department of Tourism and Thailand's Film Commission uh, we are now in the middle of a film production boom and very well deserving of the term hub. Uh, looking at last year's figures for 2011 606 foreign productions from 46 different countries were based and shooting out of Thailand and uh, that is a 296 advertising shoots as well that's nearly one a day so countries as diverse as Chile Germany Nepal have been visiting and using locations from all over the country and raking in approximately 21.3 million dollars in terms of advertising and 39.2 from film shoots, so that is really, really great. Uh, on the downside, we are competing against uh, other countries in Asia, like India, Japan, and Korea, who are also leading the production roster. Well, a lot of what, what the draw for doing here in, in Thailand is, not only do we have a wide variety of locales, different scenery to look at, but people just love coming here in terms of when they're not on the set, mm. they enjoy being able to stay here and, and have vacations and whatnot. And we also provide everything from pre to post production. Mm. Whereas in some other countries, they don't have the facilities, they don't have the locations, or they may have one or the other. Right. Um, and some of the comments are that the service, that, that when you're not shooting, or even when you are, it's, it's great. Because well, we always mm. have the smiley faces. What's not included in those figures, of course, is the money that these artists or the filmmakers actually use afterwards. You know, they actually go and have their hotels, as you say, they go to Koh Samui or they go to Phuket, they go to the mountains, and they can actually spend a lot of money while they're here. So it's an extra boost to the Thai economy. We need it all. Well, talking about boost, boosts, for those who are still following the Paralympics, Thailand is doing extremely well. As Valerie mentioned in the beginning of the show, we have won a gold and we have won a bronze. Uh, wheelchair racer Kun Saichon Kun Jen won the bronze for Thailand in the 100 meter wheelchair race at the 2012 Summer Paralympics in London. And also Kun Run Rungro Tainiyom is a table tennis player who won the first gold medal for Thailand in his table tennis against the world number one Alvaro Valera in Spain. Beat him 3-0. Wasn't wow. it a great match? Did you watch the, the game? It was I, I did, fantastic. I did see the highlights. Absolutely. What a great uh, table tennis player he is, you know. Really fantastic. Well, it's like we mentioned before when we were talking about the Paralympics and the, the performances, mm. the, act, you know, the athletic ability of, of, mm. of these athletes is, is phenomenal. Being able to do these things, as I mentioned, even I could not compete with these guys. Mm. 
Not even you. Not even me. Sad, really. It is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, next on to the book industry, where uh, e-books are turning a new page. Um, the trend points towards upward sales trends and uh, the potential for e-books in Thailand. But uh, all at the same time, there's been talk that stricter copyright protection is very much needed. Now, despite the growing awareness of uh, digital content available, Thailand e-books uh, market share only represents 1% of the entire uh, book industry. Um, now, there are some key players in the market, uh, mainly Asia Books and AIS, and the other one is B2S. These are the online bookstores in Thailand. AIS claims to be the country's largest online bookstore. and. Uh, um, has sales of about 300,000 book downloads per month. B2S and Asia Books get uh, 70,000 and 100 downloads per month, respectively. So there is definitely a great potential for expansion. And uh, the senior vice president of HarperCollins New York was recently in Bangkok just to talk about this. Um, they were discussing the open system where you can buy an ebook once and read it anywhere on the Kindle, the PC, the Mac iPhone, iPad, or BlackBerry, and other Android devices. And then the closed system allows you to read it only on whatever um, um, device. device that you bought it from. So, um, yep, there is definitely a lot of room for expansion. And also, interestingly enough, they said we need more non-glaring screens. It's very hard to read because um, the sun is so bright and very strong here. Well, well absolutely. <laughs> sunglasses. <laughs> well, you, you figure with all the, the mobile devices, the ties are just, you know, they love you. Know, everyone seems to have an iPod or an iPad or some mm. other smart device. So having those books around, not having to carry around the paperback, though I do still prefer the Me paper. Too. Um, <laughs> it makes it much more accessible to them. Now, I know for a lot of the foreigners out there, you're thinking that, well, I have a Nook, I have a Kindle. Um, so you, I think you will see that, at least for the foreigners and with all the English language content that's out there, you'll find they're still using services like Amazon mm -hmm. or the Barnes & Noble as well. Right. Um, but great to see that you know, Thailand is actually coming here. Yeah. E-books has less of a draw here because books here are generally quite a bit cheaper. Like We print them here, mm -hmm. so books are quite affordable anyway. But there are some, that, uh, some titles that you couldn't find in the very best of bookstores here, and you definitely need to download or purchase them. Well, ho hopefully it also encourages uh, a lot of the younger generation to start reading more because I know that's one area that Thailand mm. seems to be lagging behind other countries here in ASEAN. We're getting better, but there's still a need. Uh, and the book shows that they have every year at the Queen's Surrogate Centre are really stating that the numbers of books being sold is increasing by double-digit figures every year. So that's a real plus. We've still got the problem with the older generation mm -hmm. that still like to look at comics, you know. It still tells <laughs> a story. We understand that. But... Uh, Anyway, that doesn't interest the expats other than uh, just a throwaway line. What else is uh, okay. the talk of the town? We are taking a look now at Thailand's economic growth under the five-year plan from the National Economic and Social Development Plan. That went from uh, the year 2006 to 2011. And uh, it's sad to say we have not reached the projected 5% growth rate, according to a senior economic official. Uh, only 2.6% growth was was achieved. Now, uh, breaking down the numbers, in the first three years of the plan, they were doing quite well, but it slowed down in 2009. Uh, economic growth slipped to 2.3%, surged up again to 7.8% in uh, 2010. And then the floods of uh, 2011 battered everything, and we achieved 0.1% economic growth in that year. Um, now, uh, a lot of the problems with this has been uh, blamed on the global economic crisis that's hitting everywhere. But yeah, there is a lot of room for um, for more economic growth, uh, especially in the industrial and the service sectors, which are growing. Uh, the agricultural and uh, service sectors are shrinking a little bit, but mm. industrial sector expanding. Well, it would be interesting if we could actually get the similar figures and, and bring it to you from uh, Vietnam and perhaps uh, even Cambodia to a, to a lesser extent to see actually how the other nations around us are performing. We'll try and do that for you in a couple of days. Well, and ending on some news that 
as foreigners we may not hear about but would actually get the effects from, you might have seen recently in Thai newspapers or on Thai TV, a big ruckus happening in Ampawa. For those of you who have visited this very scenic outside of Bangkok destination, it's really known for its, its fireflies, yes? Mm. Yes. Absolutely beautiful. Well, to it's visit. historical buildings too. I mean, the buildings mm -hmm. are very old, so it's very traditional. It's all mm. on the river, and there are fireflies. And there are fireflies. <laughs> and there's, as you mentioned, beautiful architecture along the canals and along the river. Yeah. And as one businessman found out, trying to remove those antique buildings did not turn out so well. In fact, there was a, about a hundred year old building that he thought, oh, this is a perfect location to build a five star hotel. I'll just demolish it all down. Well, once the locals caught whiff of this project, they took action, had a big protest, invited all the media, and it was such a large public outcry that they ended up canceling it. Now, he claims that, you know, he was actually doing this for the benefit of the community. It was going to help bring in more jobs, more income for the area as well. Everything was legal, and, and you know, he was like, oh, but, you know, I'm doing this on good intentions. Uh, but now he's done an about face mm -hmm. and saying, I will preserve this. I care about Ampua. Mm. I think we'll he's handled it very well. I mean, it's very, very difficult, I have to say, to, to actually go through the planning stage, plan what you're going to do, get all the finance, and then not go ahead with the project. He's come back and he said, well, you know, okay, if that's what the people want and let's protect the area, I'm sure he'll find something else to do there, but maybe back a bit, not yeah. uh, right on the river and near these buildings. That, why do people go to Ampua? They want to see the old buildings. Mm. They want to actually go to the homestays. They yeah. want to eat in the local restaurants with the local people. It's becoming quite a, you know, a popular destination. Well, that route along the canal is very, very scenic, and it would just look wrong if you had a new building that was kind mm -hmm. of superimposed onto all the old ones. But rightly, as you said, if uh, you kind of uh, built it away from the main canal strip, I'm sure loads of people would love to take advantage of it. I know there's already one very, very modern hotel, mm -hmm. which looks like a cube. <laughs> so it looks kind of out of place. But it's not on the river, so you kind of see it first, and then you get into the main bit, and it, it, doesn't, it hasn't received any protests. What I think should happen is actually they should bring all the people from Ampua up to Bangkok where we've actually got older buildings being pulled down that are of this significance uh, in terms of our history and get them to protest or show the Bangkok people how to protest very nicely but very logically to actually preserve some of the buildings here but that's probably a story for another day. It probably <laughs> is but that does wrap around our talk of the town for today. All right we're going to take a break and uh, when we come back, I actually had the opportunity to go to see this Mr. Jerry Cobos. He, in fact, is a, well, what would I say, a contemporary artist, abstract art. He's just opened his exhibition in Saturn, actually, at the H Gallery. Now, it's quite unusual work. Remember, he's a self-taught artist. It's worth a visit. Enjoy after the break. <laughs> 